Good morning. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, let's start uh, with the song Praising the Lord, uh, shall we? <clears throat> Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom. 
wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Good morning. morning. It's good to see you. More and more showing up, so that's good. Some strange times we're living in, aren't we? Hope everyone picked up a bulletin this morning, uh, information in there. I probably should have read it before I got up here, but <clears throat> see if it has has a list of names. Uh, good to see Barb's here this morning. I heard that Dan has turned the corner and doing better, so that's good. Uh, Mary's here. We'll see how long she goes before she starts coughing. So, oh, oops. <clears throat> Hopefully everyone else is on the men too. So I'm glad to hear that. You know, are you on the men, Greg? Oh yeah. Okay. Good. Oh, I'll slide over. Oops. Whoop. That's a pretty narrow window there. Need a, a mark, huh? Okay. Uh, Carson Fitzgerald slipped. Uh, he slipped when when on his knees. Put his arm down, tore his right rotator cuff. Oh boy, that sounds bad. I'm going to be doing therapy. And uh, tr there's news on Trevin Buchanan, the preacher in Stolly Park that was in the hospital here for a while. Uh, oh, and Angela Lyles was found to be cancer free. I haven't heard how they're doing with their COVID. Is, have you heard anything? They're, they're doing well, so that's good to know. And Cheryl seeking prayers for her move. And uh, Jimmy Robinson uh, from the church in Stratton had surgery to repair his broken legs. That does not sound good, but I guess that's progress. So please read through there and make sure you add those to our prayer list. Uh, we've got kids. Heading off to school, I think some of them already did. I've noticed Tucker already took off for school. I'm sure there are other ones, so be praying for them to have a good school year. And pray for our members here, too. Note, Mary has some milk left over from camp. If you see, see her, if you would like a gallon. I think we brought a couple gallons of milk. that may not last till the next thing shows up. Anything else that I've missed this morning? If not, we will begin our service with a prayer. Would you pray with me, please? Dear Lord, we're so very grateful to be able to gather here this morning. Uh, for those that could come, we're also very thankful for those that are joining us online. We pray that you be near and dear and close to each and every one of us. Uh, so thankful that uh, everyone is getting through this uh, COVID deal and hopefully everyone will be back to normal soon and we can have our regular classes and church service. Um, thankful that you're watching over those uh, uh, with, with that. There are others that we've talked about that need your prayers also in hospitals and, and dealing with so many things. Uh, also be with Cheryl and in her, in her moving we know there are probably others that, that we need to pray for. And please, you know everything that's going on. Please help them and uh, help us to, to do what we can for all of those we know. Uh, please be with our country. Uh, the things going on, every seems to be in turmoil still. Uh, we, we know that uh, you can take care of everything and that if we look to you for peace and guidance that... Uh, we will come through all of this uh, a better people. Uh, please be with our young people heading off to school and college and keep them safe and help them to, uh, to learn more and to, to be good examples to those around them. Uh, we all need to be uh, shining lights in your kingdom for those around us. So 
Bless us as we go through this service. Be with Greg as he presents his lesson and Ed as he leads us in song. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we come before thee now. At thy feet we humbly bow. Oh, do not our suit disdain. Shall we seek thee, Lord, in vain? Shall we seek thee, Lord, in vain? Lord, on thee our souls depend. In compassion now descend. Fill our hearts with thy rich grace. Tune our lips to sing thy praise. Tune our lips to sing thy praise. In thine own appointed way, now we seek thee Lord, we know not how to go. Tell a blessing thou bestow. Tell a blessing thou bestow. Grant that all may seek and find the supremely kind. Heal the sick, the captive, <clears throat> to the soul rejoice in thee. Let us all rejoice in thee. Um, on this next song, uh, don't read the music on the screen. Um, <clears throat> we sing the Mozart version, and that's the Yarbrough. Um, so, but most of the words are right. If you do want to um, get a book out to sing along, it is still 612. Take my life and let it be Consecrated, Lord, to Thee Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I will be Drew Arnold, lead us in a prayer. Father in heaven, we again come to you in prayer. We thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy in this country, especially the freedom to worship you. We pray that we never may lose any of these freedoms. 
We thank you for the Bible that we have to study, to use, to guide, especially the teachings that Jesus left behind for us. We pray with those who have health problems, whether it be COVID or injury or whatever, that they may soon recover. We pray that our service will be pleasing to you and we will be stronger, better Christians because of it and you will be pleased with us. We ask for your forgiveness when we fall short. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Drew. <clears throat> you are the words and the music. You are the song that I sing. You are the melody. You are the harmony. Praise your name, I will bring. You are the Lord of Lords, you are the mighty God, you are the King of all kings. So now I give back to you the songs that you gave to me, you are the song that I sing. You are the words and the music, you are the song that I sing. You are the melody, you are the harmony, praise to your name I will bring. You are the Lord of Lords, you are the mighty God, you are the King of all kings. So now I give back to you the song that you gave to me, you are the song that I sing. Um. We will be partaking in communion after this song, so if you'd gather your communion items. <clears throat> Why did my Savior come to earth and to the humble go? Why did he choose a lowly bird?
It is that time for us to remember. This time for us to come together on the first day of the week to remember our Lord and our Savior, to put him in our heart and in our mind as we up and remember what he did for each and every one of us. He was sent to this earth by our Heavenly Father. He was brought for us so that we would have a way, a plan of salvation, so we could be with God for eternity. We are thankful for that. And as we prepare to partake of this fruit of the, fruit of the vine and the loaf, let's put these thoughts in our heart and our mind as to what Jesus went through for us. We go to Isaiah and we see this was what was planned. This was what was to happen. And then we see in the New Testament, in each one of the Gospels, what Jesus went through, the pain and the agony, so that we wouldn't have to. We have that promise of eternal life once we put Christ on our baptism. As we partake of this loaf, let us think about this, that precious body that was put on that cross for us. Let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father, we come at this time saying thank you. Thank you for this loaf that represents your son's body that was put on that cross. The agony that he served that he up and suffered for us. And again, we say thank you for that. We know that he went through much pain, but again, he did it for us, and again, we say thank you. Father, as we partake of this loaf, we ask that we would remember this love and sacrifice that was given for each and every one of us. We ask this in his most beautiful name. Amen. As we continue in this time of remembrance, this fruit of the vine that represents the most precious thing, his blood that washes away our sins. These are the thoughts that we need to have inside of us in our heart and our soul as to what it means to each and every one of us as we partake of it. Let's return to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father, we continue in this time of remembrance. And Father, as we prepare to partake of this fruit of the vine that represents that most precious blood, that precious blood that was shed on that cross, that precious blood that washes away our sins will become your children. We ask, Father, that we would remember this every day of our lives, not just on the first day, but we up and know the sacrifice and the love that was given to each and every one of us, and we say thank you for that. Continue to be with us, Father, to give us love, strength, and the guidance in which to follow you and the steps of Jesus has placed here. Again, we ask this in his most beautiful name. Amen. Also is his habit and a commandment that we lay by in store. Granted, we do not pass a plate anymore at least for a while. But there is a place to put contributions in the back, and it can also be done electronically. I leave that to you. But we also say thank you, Lord, for the blessings you give to us. Let's return to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father, again, we say thank you for all that you give to us. The things that we see in our daily lives, we know come from thy hand, and we say thank you. All the blessings that you've given to us, we up and pray, Father, as we get these blessings from you, that we use them wisely and we do them so that we up and continue to glorify you in everything that we do, but we do it in your name. And we say again, say thank you. Father, as we do give back to you, we ask that we have give that as we have purpose in our heart. We do so willingly and cheerfully because you give us so much, we can never say thank you enough. Continue to be with us, Father. He says we do pray in Jesus' most beautiful name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I'm satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the ransom will shine, I want a gold one, that silver line. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we will never grow old and someday yonder we will never more wander but walk the streets that are purest gold though often tempted tormented and tested and like the prophet, my pillow was stone. And though I find here no permanent dwelling, I know he'll give me a mansion my own. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we will never grow old and someday yonder we will never more wander but walk the streets that are pure as gold don't think me poor or deserted or lonely i'm not discouraged i'm heaven bound i'm just a pilgrim in search of a city i want a mansion a robe and a crown i've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we will never grow old and someday yonder we will never more wander but walk the streets that are purest gold Today's reading is Matthew 5, verses 3 through 7. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Good morning, church. Uh, welcome. Welcome to everyone online. And I don't know, want to know who they are. Okay, I just want to focus here. Uh, the last couple weeks have been kind of interesting. And I'd like to take this time to thank everyone here and everyone online for your understanding and your patience. We had a Wednesday night class that 70% of the people left or were positive within a few days with COVID. And that was scary. Now, some people weathered the storm with very little symptoms, and some people got really sick. So we decided to do what we did last Sunday. Uh, and it was very weird preaching, or not preaching, I did the Lord's table. I think Jerry sat there and Bobby sat there, and this is my cue to everyone here. A nod every now and then is nice. Uh, when you make eye contact, and I kept looking back and forth, and, and I think Bobby nodded once, and that made me feel good. Uh, <laughs> what I ask you not to do is throw up your hands like this. Please don't do that, okay? If you disagree with me today, that's fine. Let's talk about it later, but just don't let me know now because I might run out the back door, all right? <clears throat> I chose the Beatitudes to talk about because this, and I'm sorry, was a lesson for me. There is only one person that I can change, and that's me. 
And when I read the Beatitudes, I know that Jesus is talking to me. I can't change you, but I can change me. And I think about, about that. And I, and I like reading through these every few months to, to kind of gauge how am I, how am I doing on my, my attitude, my Beatitudes. And each time I get something more out of it. And I, I did on this time something really big. So before we start, I, I always take myself back to that time. Because I, and, and, and pretend, which is not hard for me, that I know nothing, okay? I go back to that time where the, the crowd is gathered and there's Jesus. And I know who he is, kind of, but I don't know a lot about him, okay? And I look around and there's all aspects of humanity there. We've got the rich, the poor, the leaders, the merchants, two farmers and one rancher, okay? We're all there. And he starts off with blessed, which means, you know, happy. He's got my attention. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, right away, I'm confused. I really am, because I don't understand. I want to be rich in the spirit, but I don't understand what he means by blessed are the poor in spirit. And, and I, the Joneses aren't here. And I think of, is this what he's talking about, that little baby that they have that is given everything by his parents? Is that what he's referring to? Is he referring to uh, spiritually just deprived of everything and needing to be filled? I don't know. I'm still working on, on that for me. The next one is, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Now for this, I have a couple stories about my life, okay? And the first story starts off with about my mom, all right? <clears throat> Ever since I was five, six years old, my mom was sick. She had gestational diabetes with my younger brother during the pregnancy. It turned into uh, type one diabetes, which I don't remember how old she was when she got it, I don't know. But, she was always sick, and she would, we've come a long ways in the treatment of diabetes, by the way. At one time, I remember going to the doctor's office with her once a month to check her, and she called it blood sugar, so we're going to refer to it as blood sugar, her blood sugar, and he would adjust her medications. Well, we check Ed's blood sugar when he got it five, six times a day, and adjustments were made. Well, she developed other health problems because of her diabetes. And this is for the younger people here, okay? I was in the Marine Corps. I was in Kings Bay, Georgia. Communication was non-existent, all right? Most of us know this. You would write a letter. You would put it in an envelope. You would seal that letter put a 22 cent stamp on the letter and mail it and you hope four to five days they would get it. Or you would go to a phone center that had pay phones and you would stand in line for a pay phone. There was no real communication. I mean, today, I know people who I don't answer their emails within 30 minutes are mad at me. This was a five-day event sometimes. So I call home, call a friend. It happened to be his birthday, and he said, sorry about your mom. What do you mean? Well, she had her foot amputated. I knew nothing about it. That was my mom. She kept things like that to herself. She was, so she went on at the end of her life. She had both feet amputated. Her kidneys no longer worked. She lost her eyesight for quite a while, regained it back through modern medicine and surgeries. We knew she was dying. What finally got her was their intestines quit working, okay? She died. We had a funeral here. The place was packed. I didn't mourn. I thought I was ready. Time went on. I thought I was ready. I thought I was over it. Someone told me, David, 
something's wrong with you. You're not mourning. Why? Or you're, something's wrong. What is it? I don't know. You didn't mourn the loss of your mother. Of course, I didn't believe him for a while. And then I realized that's true. I didn't. And, and once I went to God with my mourning, my heart was healed. The other story is about my grandma. Cozy check, my mom's mom. We lost my grandpa, he was fairly young. And he had heart issues his entire life from being in the Navy, something happened during World War II. <clears throat> the last two weeks of his life she spent with him at the hospital. Now, when your grandma, who's 68, 70, is telling you the story and you're 15, it's kind of hard to understand. At least I, I was very uncomfortable. But she told me about how she went home and how she was sobbing uncontrollably and she felt the presence of God come upon her and literally wrap the bed around her. Because I always wondered, how did my grandma get over this devastating loss so quickly? And she told me that, and she told me that a few times about it. And I thought, God helped heal her heart, her, her sorrow. The next one is, where is it? Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Our society, our world doesn't put meek as a trait you want to be. A couple different definitions, and this definition, meek being patiently calm, humble, and peaceful is, again, not me. <laughs> the lesson's for me, right? It is not me. Uh, another story. This is where a person took an afternoon from me, okay? Literally took my afternoon because I was not meek. <clears throat> Every year, we bring in our equipment from 5960 Maple Road into Landmark. Well, Tractors aren't hard because they're not as big. The combine, that's another story. I take up the entire road. My, I can't move. My duel is on the one edge next to the road and my other duel is right next to the dotted yellow line. And it never fails, and I can do 26.4 miles per hour. So just remember that. From Maple Road to Landmark in a car is eight minutes, not speeding. It's eight minutes. So if you got on behind me at Maple Road, it takes me 22 minutes in combine, you lost 15 minutes of your day, right? The gestures I get sometime are horrible, <laughs> okay? And this Friday was the weirdest one I've ever had. I'm getting to the four lane. I see the car come up. I'm hoping he stops because I can't stop. He pulls right up to the edge. I mean, I bet I missed his front end by this much with my duel, which I would have creamed that car. All right. He whips out, cuts in front of somebody, cuts in front of somebody, and is so angry that he wants me to know about it, he does an illegal U-turn and comes back to let me know how angry he is. I was mad. I was just like, why? And then I'm like, he's the opposite of Meek. Well, so am I, because I let it steal my day. Uh, I admit my mistake there. I was angry, okay? That made me mad. And then we're headed home, and this is really the moral of the story. There was a Kloss that was taking up the road. That's bad. John Deere's are okay. Kloss is bad, all right? That's far more humor. <clears throat> Hunger and thirsting for righteousness. <clears throat> now I get to tell a story about Ed. When he first became a diabetic, all right, <clears throat> I thought I knew a lot about diabetes. I really didn't, not, not like I should have or thought I did. He's a, a wee lad, we're in Kearney, and well, let me back up just a little. When my mom went low, it was scary, all right? It was, right? She would go start wailing making these weird, and there's no nothing. You had to literally 
stick your finger, which fortunately she had, she didn't have teeth, pull those dentures out. Otherwise she'd, I know it's terrible. She could bite pretty hard. Get the dentures out, get your finger in there, get the mouth open and get this jelly in there to bring her back. That's what we had to do. And more than once. So Ed's going low. This is flashing through my mind that I'm going to have to pry my finger in there and sit some jelly. So we go to Bob's Superstore because they had the deal of the day meal deal. All right. Where you have the protein and two sides. I sat there and, and pop. I sat there and watched him inhale this food like I've never seen somebody in my life. I mean, it was scary. You would not. I thought he was going to eat the styrofoam. He, he ate it. You know those little pats of butter that you peel a little thing off and you got the, you know, it's your one serving of dairy. He took that off, that slice of sandwich meat, rubbed it on there, balled it up, it was gone. I didn't know if he, where it went, it was just gone. Is that what he wants from us? To hunger and thirst like that, like our life depends on it? I think so. I do. And, I, and every time I read that, I envision this little guy killing that meal like he did. And that pop just went down to the bottom and three more went with it just that fast. Is that what he wants? <clears throat> Mercy. Mercy is a hard one in my mind. Mercy is a tough one. It's easy to give mercy to the ones we love. And it's really easy to give mercy to the ones who love us. But I know happy people tend to be more merciful. The guy in the combine, my mercy should be given to him. I mean, I, I feel bad for this guy, what he did. I, uh, it's not really what I wanted to do is have somebody in the buddy seat and take a picture and go to his house and say, what's your problem? You know, but that's not right. That's not what we're called to do. We're called to have mercy upon this person. All right. That was kind of some stuff that I get out of it. Now's the lesson, okay? This is what I really get out of these, all right? Poor. We don't know what poor is here in this country. You can go to a homeless community where you think they're poor, they have stuff, okay? He wants me to come to him with no stuff, that I am there empty. I'm there to be refreshed and I'm there on my knees mourning, not just mourning the losses of my loved ones, but mourning my sins, opening my heart, opening those doors that I have shut away. I may have been forgiven of these sins. I may have gone to God and asked for forgiveness and he said, you are forgiven, but I am still suffering from these sins. He wants me to open that door to him. Meek. He wants me to come meekly. He wants me to be overly submissive. This is where a hard one, not thinking highly of myself, but being able to draw my strength and my courage and my conviction from God. Hungering for his righteousness. I am not righteous. I want you to know that. We are not righteous. We are made in the image of God, but it's his righteousness that we should be craving, not man's right, excuse me, man's, man's righteousness and receiving mercy that we didn't deserve. I left off a pure heart on the reading because it says, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. I don't know how we can have a pure heart because can we see God by doing all this? No. We still need Jesus. Uh, can you get to heaven by knowing a guy that knows a guy? Yeah. I mean, if we know Jesus, we can get to heaven. So... What I want, what I'm trying to get out of the Beatitudes, I want more, okay? I want a closer relationship with God. I could memorize the Bible 
from front to back. But if I don't have a relationship with the, our, the one who wrote the Bible, it does me no good. Having the relationship with God is what I desire, is what I want to have. This went a lot faster than it did at home. <laughs> and so we could probably sing a few more songs, or I could ramble for a little bit longer. Uh, but that's my, that's my point. That's my point. To have a relationship with the Creator is what we should desire. We can, I think, I, maybe I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Knowing a guy who knows a guy can get you in. But that's not, okay, that gets you into heaven. Here on earth, what do you want? What do you want here on earth? Do you want to be angry? Do you want to be mad? I remember now what I was going to say. I said that mercy, this lesson was for me on mercy because I have been angry at my brother for five years now. He's a sociopath. I'm sorry. <laughs> he is. And I've told myself that if I went to him and forgave him, he would say, see, I was right. It's not for him, it's for me. If I can forgive him, maybe I can go right in the pasture and not be mad from those weeds that he let grow 10 years ago, you know? I mean, really, the lesson is for me, and that's what I'm, I'm saying. Have a relationship. I do believe that that has probably kept me from having a closer relationship with God is my anger at my brother. Uh, if you have a need, now's the time to come forward. If you are at home and you have a need, um, call me. Call one of the elders. Call Greg. Uh, call us. Text us. Uh, prayer is super powerful. Super powerful. I have another story. Uh, have a business acquaintance out west. She's a super nice lady. Her father got COVID. He said, we'll pray for you. It opened up a door. We become, Tish and I become more friends with her now and her family. Saying you pray for someone draws you closer together. I, I, we pray for everyone here all the time. We pray for your sorrows. We pray for your joys. We pray for your healing. Okay? We pray for you. I ask you to pray for me. Pray for me and my, my healing of, of my anger issue that I have with my brother. Pray for that. Uh, but if you have a need, uh, Ed's going to lead us in a closing song. Uh, please come forward as we stand and sing. Hark the gentle voice of Jesus Let's bow our heads. Holy Father, we praise you for your infinite wisdom this morning. Because you set up a plan for us 
to gather together on the first day of the week to help remind us of our conviction to you and to show to others by the way we live our lives that you love everyone and that they can see your compassion by how we treat other people. Father, it's good for us to be here to lift our spirits, to realize that the Holy Spirit is living within us and that he cheers us up during times like what we're going through today. Father, we thank you for your love and we thank you for your kindness. And Father, I pray that uh, you have blessed David for bringing the lesson this morning. And I thank everyone that is here this morning. Please watch over them as they depart to go home. Grant them a safe journey. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Such was the sun. 